Militant minded general nine grip the grip with blades and a pen that can sharpen your spine stiff. Level headed though my mind flips from side to side with an acrobat's experience after I stick it. I'm living down a demon possessed. I he yeah, he seems Jay's the best for the job with no code. What's the word, Jaws KTR underscore podcast hashtag KTR? We are KTR and we are in the building with your boys, Cinco, Big Harb, and J Bo himself for episode 45 of know the roast podcast hashtag ktr we are ktr and my brothers how are y'all doing today exhausted and sleep deprived so i'm good bud it is early it is it's early i haven't been asleep yet but we're gonna get right into this episode so we can knock it out and get some sleep real quick but before we dive into episode 45 y'all gotta do this one simple favor for us wrestling community viewers listeners watchers everywhere Follow us on all social media platforms. Ah, I messed up already. <laughs> it's early. Follow us on all social media platforms. KTR underscore podcast, Twitter, the Instagram, No Rose Podcast, Facebook, YouTube, No the Rose Podcast, all podcast platforms. Google Podcast, Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcast, Pod. I mean, we all everything. And don't forget to get your merch at pro wrestling slash KTR Podcast. Now, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get down to this business. Let's get to this work because we need some sleep. It is early right now. It is 8 o'clock in the morning central time for two of my co-hosts. It is 6 a.m. for me right now on the West Coast. But we going to knock this out real quick and get done. First off, first of before we dive to this episode, though, real quick, I want to give a big shout out and congratulations to Tasha Steeles on winning the Impact Knockout World Championship last night. Mm-hmm. Also, with that being said, being the first Afro-Latina Knockouts World Champion ever in Impact history. How do y'all feel about this new this new move, this this new grind, this new championship for her? You know, this the the build is very in- enjoyable and it's entertaining here i even give you my personal opinion the first time i saw tasha Steele in impact wrestling i wasn't a fan right off she was somebody i definitely had to grow on and honestly uh fire and flavor her and kiara hogan uh, them splitting up and kiara you know she's going on to do other things in wrestling this was honestly the best move for Tasha because now I'm able to see more of her in the ring and just her, especially now that we had some character from her from the tag team scene. And now that accumulated into a, a, an amazing singles run, her winning the championship actually makes sense. It, it feels good. It looks good. So, yeah, all, all respect. I'm, I'm behind this. Big Hall, how you feel? Yeah, I agree. I'm with it. You know, I'm always down for somebody new getting the opportunity to um... – to shine, to flourish, to be a champion, and show what they can do to lead the division in the company. So I'm looking forward to see how the run goes. Me too, me too. Like I said, get big shout out, get big congratulations, all that stuff. Like I said, just had to get that out real quick. You know, that was just a big moment watching that on uh, Impact with the show and everything with their, you know, for everybody on the pay-per-view card, honestly. But yeah, that, that, was the, that was the main big picture for, mainly for us to see that actually happen. So big shout out, big congratulations, Tosh Steels. Hope and pray in all your future endeavors, successful run. You know, keep on going, keep on grinding, you know, keep working because we want to see you do that and we want to see you shine. Cool. Next, I was going to pick it back on. We're going to start talking a little AEW, but we, with this AEW talk, it may turn into some Ring of Honor talk as well because owner Tony Khan has bought Ring of Honor. It wasn't it wasn't too long ago when Ring of Honor was like quote unquote uh ending their business for uh a little minute or it was going on a hiatus for a while when they made that announcement. And now this the purchasing of Ring of Honor alongside with AEW. I'm not sure what direction it's gonna go into. I'm I'm I just, like I have no idea. Like AEW roster is already loaded. Now you got Ring of Iron, which makes it even more loaded. Are they going to make this a combination? Will Ring of Iron continue, but have like, you no, know, maybe like, let's say like a better like TV deal, will be on cable more, like primetime slots? Uh, 
Is it going to be a faction versus faction thing? I, what, what are your thoughts on this uh, this new business venture uh, with Tony Khan with AEW and Ring of Honor? So, uh, if you don't mind, Harp, I'll, I'll start off on this one because Ring of Honor has a near and dear place in my heart. Um, Ring of Honor, as many wrestling fans know, you know they they've gotten a lot of great wrestlers out of where we've seen Seth Rollins or Tyler Black, Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson, whichever version that you know of. But you know, I also look at Ring of Honor for some of my favorites, such as Low Key. Uh, we also see Davey Richards, Claudio Castagnoli, of which you all know him as Cesaro. Um, even now with Jonathan Grisham, the reigning defending Ring of Honor world champion. So there, there's a whole lot of history that I love as far as wrestling and matches that come from it. Now, I have to, however, view this differently than when AEW partnered with Impact Wrestling. Um, they that was more of a partnership where you had Kenny Omega was champion and you know you see them sometimes you see them maybe not even during a show with Ring of Honor now being bought out by Tony Khan this is completely different Tony Khan is in complete control in this situation which means I'm pretty sure he's going to do a whole lot more advertising he's going to put them a whole lot more on the forefront just like Singo said there's more than likely going to be a much better TV deal um, they're going to make sure Ring of Honor showcased a whole lot more if not through commercials, through the live show on Dynamite and Rampage to make sure they get their viewers. So I, I see they're going to get a lot of publicity. My only fear is what AE or Tony Khan is currently doing at AEW now, and that's oversaturating the roster. So what will be smart if he really wanted to, he can just take the some of the existing wrestlers, especially the ones he's not using, and use that in Ring of Honor to help A, boost them up, and B, use wrestlers for the contracts they're being paid for however unfortunately i don't see that happening i think tony khan going to keep hiring more people for AEW, then start hiring more people for ring of honor and then they're going to be back in that same limbo of wrestling that they're currently dealing with right now in AEW. but the point is i do think this is a better opportunity for ring of honor to not only come back but they got some strong finances and some strong media attention behind them if done well I agree um, with most of what you said. Um, I'm just a lot more pessimistic about it. The way that it's been trending, Tony Khan is really going the way Vince did back when he was collapsing the territories and snatching up everything he could find. Um, he saw the deal. He grabbed it. Can't really fault him for it. The only way that it works is if he keeps them separate. Now, they could do little collaboration, pay-per-views and events and, and all that little stuff, but they need to keep those two wrestling entities completely separate. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be more like um, WWE when they got ECW. He's going to have it as like another brand and eventually it's just going to be absorbed into the company or he's just going to absorb it completely on its own and just use the back library Um Maybe come up with some kind of streaming thing, you know, as, as popular right now, um, so that they have back catalog of AEW and um, Ring of Honor stuff. But I don't, I don't see it being. It's good for the people who now have work, and they have contracts, they you know getting fed and everything. But like you said, they already oversaturated. They already got way too many people to deal with now. You know what I mean? Um, I was looking at like we was looking at the card for the pay per view, and it's stacked but there are still very notable names missing from that stacked card. And I mean, like it's top to bottom. Every match looks great. You got good people in there, but what about every damn body else? It's you know, 12 that's, matches that's, on that <laughs> AW Revolution card right now. Man, that is a thick card. And you still missing very notable people. So um, I feel like it's an overreach. Ain't my money, so I can't really call it. But it's definitely an overreach as far as a wrestling company who's still pretty new, doing pretty well for themselves. But um, we all know when companies grow too fast, they more often than not crumble under that weight than they do flourish with. So we just going to have to see. Like I said, it's just a scene in the way game to see how everything pans out and what plans Tony Khan has for that. Because honestly, I have no idea what he might do like i just hope is that he doesn't ruin the legacy and the prestige of what ring of honor has done in history pretty much you know 
like I said, it like I said at the end of the day, it is what it is because it's in his hands and his control. And like like I said, it can get oversaturated and possibly diminish from just you know wrestling in general and just turns into just one big AEW entity, like which is a strong possibility of what could happen. Considering like what we've seen happen with the WWE and like what they've done with past you no know, wrestling like WCW and ECW, like it's just all WWE now. So this just might be just that step just to be one big all AEW. And who knows what, what could happen? This could this could possibly just like the the next biggest thing and just get on WWE level. Like now this is gonna be uh things gonna be formed in time with you no know, like maybe performance centers and Places like around shoot the the world with you no know, different AW establishments like AW England or something like that. Like this just may be that first big step that they're planning to do with their foreseeable future. But like I said, it's just a waiting game. We gotta see what happens and whatever happens, happens. But like at the end of the day, as long as all those people on those contracts are getting paid, yep. I ain't mad at it, and I'm happy for it, all of them. And if Every- they're going. to using Ring of Honor, y'all better make sure y'all need to start using Jay Lethal regularly, because that boy, ever since he's been signed, y'all been using him on Dark and literally nothing else. So please, at least utilize him properly. Right. That's- I'm sorry. No, that's all good. I'm, wait, that, that, that was needed. That was needed. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, with that, no, sorry, we're talking about AEW. Uh, we're going to talk about um, a recent comment that a recent signee of AEW had made. Of oh, Kyle O'Reilly, uh, after his departure from uh, WWE, uh, mainly from NXT, pretty much. Um, I'm not gonna like go over like the whole thing. I'm just gonna basically just take like just one piece of it, honestly. And basically, all in all, he said that uh, he just believes that the rest, the love of wrestling. It's gone, but mainly he's just talking about the specific brand with the WWE in general, uh, not so much of everything else. He's he's happy and satisfied where where he's at AEW because I say that's where all his buddies and friends that he basically grew up in the business with in wrestling. And as you can see right now, pretty much AEW is the prof- professional wrestling business currently right now. No, that's when people care about like the action in ring stuff and you no know, WB is, is obviously sports entertainment is more of the entertainment side you know putting these vignettes and shows and, and this and that but do you believe that the the love of wrestling and the wrestling business is gone within the WB and just more so <laughs> towards just strictly entertainment or if you you, you go ahead and start off on this oh one. lord <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that 100%. I think if we look at the era we are in um, as a as a culture and as a um, community, really, social media is taking over everything. A lot of people are only interested in the fame of wrestling. Like we talked about with the celebrities um, mid last year, everybody was having beef with wrestlers because it's you, you could actually get a name like that. You know what I mean? There's people, um, I remember Punk talking about Daniel Bryan and if you go back far enough, everybody talks about the people who are just there to collect the paycheck. Uh, mm-hmm. Because when the thing gets big enough, that's really all that you need. You can be lazy. You don't really have to to, to do much. Uh, but I think that that's a lot more common now. If you look at social media numbers, there are a lot of wrestlers who don't get a lot of screen time but do really crazy numbers on <laughs> like Instagram, Twitch, and all these other platforms because of their association but they're more charismatic or more entertaining doing something else. So I definitely feel like the love from professional wrestlers and from fans regarding wrestling has dwindled um, a bit. And I think that um, I, it's not really like an innocent type thing. People really just leeching off of it. It's still a popular medium and it's still a way for you to, you know, build a fan base without actually having to excel at professional wrestling. Uh, so I, I I agree with the uh, comment. I agree with what he said. <sighs> NXT pre-COVID was the perfect example of pro wrestling and entertainment, where you can have great in-ring wrestling. You can clearly see the love of wrestling. Showcase it 
on a large platform, have large takeover shows where numerous people are invested. You have your version of mega stars and people like Adam Cole, um, Johnny Gargano, Samoa Joe, even, you know, and, and have a great wrestling show. As time proceeded forward, especially, you know, Triple H continued to rest, but where he had to take his exit and NXT pretty much converted until until Raw or SmackDown Light, just more geared towards the younger fans. You can continue to see Kyle O'Reilly's point where what you had was a perfect example of wrestling, but it was thrown away because of what? It wasn't for better wrestling, and it definitely wasn't for better entertainment. It was for the better use of uh, publicity, propaganda, and money for for whatever reason. You're not even watching wrestling anymore. You're you're literally watching the definition of wrestling, which is a uh, um, choreographed, um, yeah, choreographed in ring action. It's. It's hard to see. And plus, you can even see it in Raw and SmackDown. So I think they're even getting worse. And it proves Kyle O'Reilly's point even more. Well, we got Johnny Knoxville on the card now. We got, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the internet guy that nobody likes. Logan Paul. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Jake Paul. I mean, and, and these are, and there was even rumors. Oh, the brother still? <laughs> <laughs> I said, look for you, Jake Paul. Logan, Jake, whatever. I, I don't care about the news. Um, and then there was even a rumor of Vince McMahon being in the match, even though that's not happening. That's not too far of what, of what may have happened. I mean, once again, the wrestling is gone. It's more of, okay, how many eyes can we just get on the show? How many eyes can we get on our programming? You know, just, just completely screw over wrestling. We just want eyes. And from that point on, you, it's not even a wrestling show anymore. But I don't want to go into too, too deep into that. But yes, Kyle O'Reilly is right. The, the love of wrestling is gone. I'll take you a little bit further. For particular brands, as of right now, the whole idea of having a wrestling show is gone. Bruh, I was more excited in the Royal Rumble when Bad Bunny came out than damn near anybody else. And on the WrestleMania card, I'm more excited to see Pat McAfee's match than damn near- <laughs> That's on the card. Like, that's telling with the situation. You know what I mean? Like, these celebrities are coming out and really outshining and outperforming all these young cats that they got that should be hungry because they cool with that. They, they don't have to do that. They don't have to make that name. They're associated with WWE. For some people, that's enough. And that's that's crazy. <laughs> you know, they just, they just, they're, they're there to be famous. They're not there to be good professional wrestlers. They're there to be famous. It's an entertainment show with wrestling, not the other way around. Yep, yep, yep. Thing, but I'm glad y'all actually touched on that WrestleMania card because I thought about the other day, like, man, like, think about how many, quote, how many celebrities or part timers are on this match card Ooh, from, from, from top to bottom, if anything. Like, I mean, in WWE's <laughs> defense, if you got two nights of wrestling that you're trying to keep going and you let go of 75% of your roster, you unfortunately had no choice but to get non wrestlers, part time, and celebrities to be on the card. Right. So, like I said, this just it, like, like I said, in all eyes of man, because I get it's, it's from a business standpoint, and they just try and get their revenue and money pretty much. Mm-hmm. And just having on like on the card, and just got all these famous celebrities, you no, know, uh, on this card, you know, they're gonna bring it out there. Celebrity friends and things like that, which is gonna generate, you know, just more money, you know, just in a way, shoot, buy. Buying them suites up at the uh, the AT and T stadium up up in Arlington, Texas. You know all the mm-hmm. media appearances and stuff all around the the Texas area with Dallas or Arlington. You know, just doing PR uh, stunts and things like that. You know, just j- the media. You know, because they know that make money. They know she, Logan Paul generates numbers and make money. Pat McAfee generates and make money. You know, just. It's just money. Money make Brock Lesnar. From a business standpoint, but then at the same time, you should be able to build your own stars to to take those spots right. and be just entertaining. But and that's the thing, not- and the thing about it, NXT really spoiled us as well. Yes, because yeah. we we really thought that change was coming from like the like the the mirrors that was running up shop, especially like the recent. Four years before they turned to NXT 2.0, like no offense 2.0, they're still young and good. You know, I like a number of rest from there, but like that, 
that stigma, like from shoot, even when shoot, like Biggie and Seth Rollins is on there, and like shoot, even Bo Dallas time on there being the champion stuff like that. It was good. It was building up to what we thought was gonna happen. Then just got wiped out. Yep. And it, it built. It was getting good. Every was, the people they signed, they were giving shine. They built their characters, and it was like a factory where they was moving up. And then um, shit up there stopped looking good because all the part time is coming in, and then it trickled down back down to NXT, and they cut it so fast after all that build. Yeah, it just like wiped it out in a couple weeks. It's crazy, right? Because I, yeah. I'm not sure if it was doing numbers or anything, or just because of like I, I don't, I couldn't even tell you. Like it, it, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that NXT should have been on TV a, a long time ago. That's all I gotta say. Instead of being on WWE Network, that that may have hurt a little bit. But like I said, that they, they were probably outshine the main roster. For all we know, yeah, I feel like that's a lot of why they limited it to keeping it on the network for as long as they did until they had actual reason to put it on live TV. It's because <laughs> consistently, them pay per views were definitely outshining yeah. uh, whatever SmackDown and Raw was putting out, like consistently right. every month. I'm, I'm sure Vince didn't want that. Cool. All right. Speaking of WWE, <clears throat> WWE is finally coming out with their video game after a, uh, it was like a two-year hiatus without putting out a video game because that last one was. Uh. Yeah, but WWE 2K22 will be coming out March 8th, the same day as this episode will come out on Tuesday. You know, it's like Tuesdays. So they got tacos and everything, tequila, yeah. But WWE 2K22 is coming out with their video game. But before that, not too long ago, they released their full roster. And like this roster is all over the place. Don't get me wrong, because this been it's a number of wrestlers on this roster that have been released over time. Huh? 36. 36 of the of the wrestlers that are on the roster are no longer a part of WWE. Oh, thank, 30, you for, thank you for that number. I had no idea. There, there you go. All the <laughs> they talk about how stacked the roster is in this game, man. And half of them are not even there. You got rid of them. I'm a, I'm a gamer, all right? So I've been paying attention for years at what people have been complaining about about the WWE games. And they just been getting worse. Now y'all come out with this slogan, it, it hits different. <laughs> and it's supposed to be a brand new engine, and it looks the exact damn same as the old crap. Their hair still looks trash. The bodies are still unrealistic and bulky. This, this is what the, the, the gaming community has complained about. You can research this, though. This, these are the things that they don't like about the game. The models are unrealistic. The hair is stiff. It don't move. <laughs> like, it looks like y'all just upgraded the graphics for the for the next gen. But y'all, you didn't change anything. I don't think it's going to be very good. Um I'm a, I always wait to see what reviews and what other people look like because I'm, I'm not buying it when it come out. After 2020, I'm still playing 2019. I just I don't know what to tell you. I'm not looking forward to it. We'll see. But 36 people that you don't even have anymore? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, this conversation may about to talk about the, you know, the ratings on the roster, but we went deeper <laughs> into the conversation. Oh, I'm talking about the game. <laughs> <laughs> he just went in on the game. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know who's not oh, buying the yeah. game? Well, so we know who's not buying the game. Um, I already have a pre order, so because yeah, I need something doing my free time. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll, I'll let y'all know how it is, like I did with 2K20. <laughs> okay, uh, well, yeah, that, that got through everything off, but yeah, <laughs> did you take a chance to look at the uh, roster rates at least? Completely different story. We can we can talk that, but did, did you look at the roster rate? <laughs> <laughs> If I could find how many characters on there that wasn't even in the company no more, I looked at the ratings. Okay. Memorize the ratings. Look so, up. so what did y'all think about the uh, the ratings on the game? Like, what what caught what caught your eye the most on there? Uh, for me, the one that caught my eye the most is actually the cover star, Ray Mysterio. Um, Ray Mysterio got obviously since he's on the show. I'm case, glad you said that because I I was looking at that too. <laughs> yeah, because. Okay, for, for those of you all who haven't seen the roster ratings, Rey Mysterio, he's in the game as like four or five different characters of himself. So if you take a look, 
His 2006 version, which is when he won the world title, that one is 87. His 2009 version, which is when he won the Intercontinental title, he's, what, 88. His 2011 version, which is when he beat John Cena for the WWE title and lost it the same night, that was 88. But his current day, current day, Rey Mysterio today, is 90, which means you're saying that the Rey Mysterio today is better than world title reign, intercontinental title reign, WWE title reign, old school reign. It, 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 that doesn't make no sense to me. So I think that's just for the cover. I'm, I'm on, I'm just turning on the 2K20 game right now just to see his rating on doing <laughs> 2 k Because I just thought about that. I was like, this man's rate is pretty high. <laughs> like, yeah, I got, I got the Xbox on right now. I'm looking <laughs> they have to justify putting them on the cover. That's really the only way they could is by giving them that high of a rating currently, even though all he does is tag team stuff now. But yes, yeah, that's the big so Current that's day Mysterio is better than both Jay and Jimmy Uso right now. You're saying current day Rey Mysterio is better than, oh, shoot, I don't know, uh, 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 The Miz even. Current day The Miz, he has more wins right and now. And The Miz actually won the world title. Right, <laughs> because the Miz is eighty six and Rey Mysterio is ninety. You're saying current day Rey Mysterio is better than Angelo Dawkins and uh, Montez Ford because they're at eighty. Uh, I mean, like, come on, now that's it, that doesn't make sense. Rey Mysterio I mean, on WWE two K twenty was rated in eighty six overall. And what twenty twenty? Yeah, that was WWE that was WWE two K twenty 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 twenty. And then we were on WWE 2K22. So, what in in that that time span? The basic two three year time span made Rape Sear go from an 86 to a 90. Uh, the fact that he's on the cover, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah, uh, Reigns on the cover because he a heel. I don't know why they wouldn't put somebody like Drew on there, but I guess Drew's not really the big draw right now. Right, just. Our choice in 2022. Like I, I, I was telling you, like whatever, whatever contract that Ray Mysterio signed was yeah. a, a, a lucrative deal with everything he has done because this man great got the cover of the video game, got his whole family on the show for a good six to eight month period, and has his son on the main <laughs> roster. But and we're didn't not go through any type of grind to NXT. He just Hopped on the main roster. Shit, even the, the Rock's daughter is not even on the main roster. She's still training <laughs> NXT. But Rey Mysterio's son is on the main roster. And since we're talking about Rey Mysterio's son right now, morning, dude. I got I got I got some names for y'all. Okay. Go ahead. I just want a yes or no answer when I ask this question. Okay. Can Rey Mysterio's son beat Cameron Grimes one on one in the match? Can Rey Mysterio's son be Cedric Alexander one on one in the match? I think he can get a roll of victory. You're talking about current day Cedric Alexander, he'll probably get a roll. Of okay, let's say, do you think Rey Mysterio's son could be Cedric Alexander in an actual fight? Uh, no. Of course, All right, then. That. You think Rey Mysterio's okay. son could be Chad Gable one on one? Uh, well, no, Chad Gable, he can probably take. Do that you think the- Dexter Loomis can be Rey Mysterio's son one on one? That's the Loomis is scary in real life and in room. Do you think Ray Mysterio's son could beat Elias? Now, you know he cannot beat my son. Okay. Even worse. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Do you think Ray Mysterio's son could beat Umberto Carrillo? Who? Uh, Umber- Umberto uh, Carrillo. Umber- yes. Umber- you say what? Yes, I'm saying yes to everybody. Ray Mysterio's son is a gangster. You wild right now. Do you think Ray Mysterio's son could beat Jinder Mahal one-on-one? Yes. As yes. much as I don't like Jinder Mahal. Juicer. That man got what? Do you think Ray Mysterio's son could beat Kalisto? Do you think Ray Mysterio's son could beat all the members that were formerly known as Retribution? <laughs> yes. T-Bar, Mace, and Slapjack. Slapjack. Do you think Ray Mysterio's son could beat Mustafa Ali? Do you think Ray Mysterio's son could beat Otis? Do you think Ray Mysterio could beat... Ray Mysterio's son could be R True. Do you think Ray Mysterio's son could be Titus O'Neil? Really? Do you think Ray Mysterio's son could be Vincent Kennedy McMahon? This is a list. How come Ray Mysterio's son is rated higher than all these other people? <laughs> Why is Ray Mysterio's son say 79? He dope. And what? Dope. 
Yep. You, you're just trolling right now. I know it. It's okay. Oh, man, you get cold out here. And what? Arm drags? Hip tosses? Dark Karanas? Talking about what? You know what? Dominic We're going to mute for a second. All right, you go, j Bone. That Dominic is actually matching Koshida in overall ratings. Like, if we're talking about wrestlers, that that one stands out to me. Uh, but yeah, yeah, man, he's cold out here. He gonna he gonna whoop everybody. World champ material. Mm, mm, mm. For you, that on feel on his daddy soon too. I see that coming. And that's that's not gonna happen. They they, they that's been squashed a while ago because that would have happened a while ago already. But like with that, besides uh, Ray Mysterio, son and Ray Mysterio with their race, any other race that uh, caught you off guard or you thought was maybe a little bit too high, too low? Bianca Blair oh. should have definitely been ninety, at least ninety for the year she had. Definitely should have been ninety. You said who? Bianca, Bianca Blair. Blair. She was at eighty-seven currently. I thought hers was 86. No, it says 87. Look at the list right now. Oh, well, whatever. Still not 90. Like, <laughs> that's the problem. Like I said, like I said yeah, because it, it threw me off because, like, Oscars are 90. Mm-hmm. And I would at least think they're on the same level. If not, Bianca's better. I would have put Oscar at, like, 88, 89, because I think 90 is a, a, a tad bit too high. Yeah, yeah. 90. Because yeah. You, you're saying now Oscar and Charlotte Flair are on the same level, and that's not the case. Because Charlotte, you know, this is my first We'll get her by Oscar in an actual fight since we're talking about real fights. Right? Okay, no, we're, we're, we're past that. We're past that. Oh, time no, now. no, hold up, hold up. Oh, my God. That was what? I asked one question about one wrestler. No, we're going to apply that to everything now. We're using your logic, Sam. That's, that's what we're doing, Cinco. All right? So, uh, <laughs> no, you telling me, you telling me that Charlotte Flair could take Oscar in a fight? Okay, <laughs> what? This is great. What? <laughs> what are you? Versus this? <laughs> what are you versus this? Like I said, Charlotte Flair is right where she deserves because of her history with winning in championships. She should be a ninety, if not ninety-one. But yes, Bianca Belair should be a ninety as well with everything that she carries. Within her repertoire of wrestling, uh, a wrestler I think that's too that that's too low is actually Baron Corbin. In my opinion, Happy Corbin. This is name. He's an eighty-one. Uh, well, up, like this past year, he really hasn't been dominant. He's just he's gotten a lot of TV time. He's just been up and down. Well, yeah, because they, they have met that that whole thing is that. Bum ass Baron Corbin that Pat McAfee had dressed him as, but like I ain't gonna put him at eighty one. Uh, I I think he's right where he needs to be because number one, he don't even wrestle that much still. Mm-hmm. Like you said, he got TV time, but he don't wrestle that much. And then yeah, he wins, but then again, if you compare that to the amount of TV time he has, it's still hard to gauge his dominance. So I think eighty one is like right where he needs to be. Ooh. Yeah, come on, be honest. He's no uh, Ray Mysterio Jr. Jr. <laughs> Junior Jr. <laughs> oh man, let's see another one. Um, Roman Reigns is at ninety-five. I, I feel like that's necessary. <laughs> with, with the, I mean, yeah, the way they've been building him over the past few years, I wouldn't be surprised if he was going to be the first wrestler they came out with. Ninety-nine. Yeah. That 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 would have actually that man was so funny. <laughs> I would not even argue that. Let's see here, Shinsuke Nakamura at eighty eight. I feel like I feel like it's too high. Okay, I, I, it's too I, high for how they booked him. I ain't even gonna lie. Yeah, for it's that, but how they've been booking him, like I said, it's, it's too high. I think Liv Morgan is too low for the type of hype and bill she's been given the past year. Seventy seven is really low. You're saying that Lacey Evans, 81, who's barely been there, has been better in the last few years or so than Liv Morgan. Why does she? Yeah, well, the way, the way, I, I don't, I'm trying to figure out how did they figure out how to, to rate these people. Because I think, like, I think automatically, like, no disrespect because it's, it's kind of disrespectful, but like, for like 
How did they, they just rate the women lower because no, just because of the women wrestling standpoint and standard? That's also why they have um, people like Oscar and Charlotte up that high is to try to circumvent that and make it look a little more even. You know, like they keep the women low because, you know, women low. But then they have a couple of them that they put up high to be like, yeah, but not all women. You know what I mean? Yeah, like they, Because like they're, they're, like they're, all, all they're the main eventers still and everything. Right. But like how they how they like underutilize the, the women's car, like on like their main event shows like Raw and SmackDown, they give them like three to five minute matches. So, you know, get time to showcase. Because ain't no way in hell Naomi should be a 79. Because Maurice is a 79. So that means you're saying she, Maurice is just as good or have been just as good as Naomi. And that that doesn't make a lick of sense. At, at all. A lot of 71 makes sense. So I get that. They're saying Maurice is better than our truth. <laughs> our truth is 77. Right. And we, we've seen Maurice wrestle on the on at the, least be in the 80s too, as consistent as he's been over the years. Right. Especially age he should he should be in the 80s he's and, uh, ain't no way nikki asa should be higher than Naomi. but I, I get it since she won the title they pushed her up over 80 okay well if we're if we're using that logic of that, that's that's, that's where it is because if if nikki if nikki asa didn't win that title she would not be over 80 i i completely agree <laughs> so if we took that same theory then that means half of these are completely inaccurate yeah Brand of mine. Sammy Zayn at an 80, I feel like it's a little disrespectful. Yeah, that's hella low. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Owens at 85. I think he should be like 86 or 87. Let me just a point off. Keith Lee at 80 is wild. Of course, that's wild because they haven't used him. They so they don't know what to give him. They contracted for injuries, time off. <laughs> They got, they, they got deductions because of, of injuries and stamina and stuff like that. That's wild. <laughs> Riddle actually should be a bit higher. Um, he's 85. I'm not saying 90, but he's been winning. He wins matches, even though most I feel like that's 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 good for him. He's not 85, 86, because he's not going above that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He he he's been very successful the last year or so. Very yeah, at, at the mid card level, I feel like that's a, that's a mid card rating. Yeah, eighty five say pretty decent for. Him. Yeah, like he pretty decent. Like it's like you could wrestle him at eighty five against like a John Cena. You could possibly get an upset in the video game, something like that. You know. Speaking of John Cena, what's his rating real quick? Ninety two. They should have put Peacemaker in the game. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's going to be a whole lot of credit uh, wrestlers uh, with peacemakers in there. Yeah, you know that. Uh, MVP, I wouldn't be surprised if that with his, uh, <laughs> how it is on the show, that little theme music thing. That'd be funny. MVP is at an 80. Okay. I mean, is it the, the old school MVP or the MVP now? MVP. MVP okay. now. Right. Teach his own. Right. I'm not mad at it. Not, not going to hate it, but yeah. Shout I out to him. MVP is. Like uh, just love my, my opinion should at least be a ninety. You said what? Sasha Banks should at least be a ninety. Uh, I'm kind of reaching. Uh, no, because every time yeah, she's back, kind of reaching. Even though she's been having injuries, she's going to have the main event slot. When you put I, Sasha, Banks, the, the attention's going to go towards it. at least I, give her. I feel like being uh, no, I'm, I'm Sasha Banks is right where she's supposed to be at eighty eight. Like eight, like a a nine at at best, at the most, because like she, like she, she's she's definitely one of the top tier uh, when wrestlers in in the business in the you know all time right now. Like saying like, just I'm I'm going based off of booking, not her actual skill level, but like right. off of the off the booking, like how they have her and everything. She's right at an eight nine, but also I do not believe she should be over Bianca Belair though. Yeah, yeah, I, I would argue that. Yeah, because they got they got <laughs> Sasha Ray higher than Bianca. Uh, where's uh, what's the name? Right, Becky Lynch, ninety two. The man, big time best. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> it's only because of. Hell. 
Um, That's because not be appropriate for. She she came back automatically over ninety when she beat Bianca Belair in twenty six seconds. At this that moment, wild. automatically ninety, and then everything else boosted her up to ninety two. This is wild. Extremely. I like Bobby Lashley. They got him at ninety one. That clearly has to be the highest he has ever had. Yep, and also AJ Styles at ninety one as well. Showing respect for the the little people. <laughs> What the? Because they disrespect them all the time. Then you see, they get 8,091, Ray Mysterio 90. Shoot, they even show respect to Finn Balor. You got 88. The Demon King got high rating too. So, yeah. <laughs> Demon yeah. Finn Balor 90. Look at that. You know what's <laughs> funny? Uh, over the last few years, when he comes out with the Demon King, he actually has been winning because he came out with the Demon King against Roman Reigns and still lost. So, he actually has currently a better win record as a Demon <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah. So very time anytime I pick Finn Balor, I'm picking the demon. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. Cool. All right, well, that's that's all we got for today. I'm, I'm gonna stop because we can go on and on about these race. But yeah, like I said, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for listening. That's all the time we have for episode 45. We appreciate y'all for listening, appreciate y'all for watching, we appreciate y'all for tuning in. But before we sign off, don't forget to do this one simple favor for us before y'all exit this episode. Follow us on all the social media platforms, KTR underscore podcast, Twitter, Instagram, Know the Rose Podcast, Facebook, YouTube, Know the Rose Podcast, all podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, we all, everything, and don't forget to get your merch at ProWrestlingTees.com slash KTR Podcast. You. This is episode 45, KTR, hashtag KTR. We are Know the Rose Podcast, and we are out. What should they do? Big Hawk. They got to do like WWE did with half of them ratings on that video game with them undeserved ass numbers. Pump them numbers. Yeah. Why did you have to take a shot at that before you signed off? <laughs> All we've been talking about the last 20 minutes. What you mean? Yeah, numbers, letters, all symbols of man made devices that could cripple us all. Improve we can't cake, panic and with storm hits and knocks out the power grid. Are you fully prepared to live off the grid? I used to.